Okay. I got a, uh, I'm gonna try to do my best impression of uh, Susquehanna alchemy and uh, try to connect a bunch of dots to bring it all back to what's occurring right now. Um, I'm gonna start with how Satoshi Nakamoto, the guy who supposedly invented Bitcoin, uh, the name means central intelligence. And you can see here, a Japanese guy answers the question, says the kanji for it basically means, intel Satoshi means basically wisdom, intelligence, and Nakamoto means uh, middle origin or origin, so central, central intelligence. So if I was the central intelligence agency and I had a new way to do uh, the next stage of currency or whatever, and I didn't want people to think it was the CIA, it was the CIA I would... Who would you try to put it off as? Would you say it was um, a English coin, an English guy's idea? Would they? Would you say it was a Russian guy, Russian guy's idea? Would you say it was a Jewish guy's idea? Of course not. No one would would ever adapt that. But if you say it's a Japanese guy that started it, everyone has no suspicion, and they go right right towards it. And I think that the CIA has been using Japan as a front, like the good, I guess, the good, I guess, um, CIA has been using Japan to put things out into the human consciousness. Now that they, uh, I've been thinking, there's a handful of Japanese anime or manga, whatever you want to call it, that um, they don't have a Japanese title. They have an English title. And all the characters have English names. Most of the characters. Which is odd. Why would, why, if you were Japanese, why would you, why would a, a comic or an anime or whatever become popular if you weren't using your own language as like names for the characters? It just seemed kind of off. So I, I remember this Satoshi Nakamoto thing, and I think they were doing this for years. They've been using Japan like this for years. Um... And they've just been pumping it through certain authors that they hired. And uh, let's see. All right. So here's one called Berserk. I'll get into Berserk later, actually. But one, like some of the uh, anime or Berserk, um, which talks about a cyclic thousand-year cycle that occurs. And there's always like a few things different every time. But there's always five God Hand. There's always a struggler, and there's always, like, some big betrayal and stuff. And I'll get back to that. And there's Griffith. Yeah, okay. Um, the no next one that has an uh, English name is One Piece. And this is the map of One Piece. You can't cross this part right here. It's called the Calm Belt. Right here. See, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see my mouse. And... So this is like, I think it's East Blue, South Blue, West Blue, North Blue, or North Blue, West Blue, something like that. And you can only enter this, this middle area here by going through a giant mountain in, in where, there, where each, each uh, like sea area, each part of the globe can enter, and it all comes out towards this area. And then it goes all the way around to here. And then this, this is the last part of the place that you can get to. And in this manga, or this anime, the, the main character wants to be the Pirate King. And when you get, you get to get, become the Pirate King, you have to get to the end of the, the end of the, uh, the call it the New World. But this side of it is called the Grand Line. And you go through the Grand Line, and then you get to this part where the world government doesn't even have any control over it. Because there's four pirates that control this area, and they're like they're like have their own army basically, and they're strong enough to take on the entire entire world government. And then there's the world government is like the fifth entity in power here, and it, it's called the world government too. In, in this, and um, the pirates, I've been thinking like all of our laws, all the all of our court systems, they're all governed by the law of merchants which is really the law of pirates. 
And that's what this whole, this entire anime is about, is pirates. And how he, he wants to be the king of the pirates. So above the law. And his, his whole thing for doing this is because he thinks the king of the pirates is the person that's most free. And I think that, I don't know, it makes a lot of connections for me. And then um, I'll get back to that one. Uh, Vibes of the co uh, uh, Cosmos. He's been putting out the, uh, the moon map pictures. And basically, this is where the sun is rotating right now. Right around here. And we're over here or something. This is where America supposedly is. According to the moon, I don't think he, I don't think he has the exact locations, like spot on. I think he, it's kind of... It's kind of pushing a little bit, but I, I just have the feeling in me that the, that the moon is definitely a map. And that this whole solar cycle, it slowly revolves and it'll start going like this all the way around. You know what I mean? And like, it, um, it does this every tw every, with the constellations. The constellations move around every 25,000 years, something like, give or take. And it move, every, every age is about 2,150 years. And we are just entering the age of Aquarius, according to what people say. I've heard that's not really what we're at. We're actually entering the age of uh, Sagittarius, which is the hunter. But I don't know. And then speaking of hunter. Uh, I'll get back to that. I'll get back to that. Uh, another one. This is the, this is the, this is the one that uh, the first CIA thing, I think, that has an English name. That kids in the '90s and early 2000s were obsessed with. Like this, this is the the show that like imprinted into me more than anything else I've ever watched. When I was a kid, I remember like uh, trying to skip football practice by hiding underneath the bed, in my parents' room, so I could watch this. When I was little, it had, and I had and I looked at my old um, notebooks when I was a kid. Look at your old uh, doodles when you were a kid. There's a lot of there's a lot of. Uh, it's pretty um, crazy. I looked at my old notebooks, and it's all pictures of this main, the main character. This, what's his name? Uh, Goku. Where's he at? This dude. And me drawing this guy in all my notebooks when I was little. I was obsessed with this. And so many people were obsessed with it. And the guy, it teaches good values. Like, it's not like a bad... It's no, like, there's no, like... Um, I didn't never sensed any like uh, subversion in in the show. Same with these other shows, Berserk and um, One Piece. One Piece has very little, but it's not really that that big. And then the next one, which I've I've uh, mentioned before on my blog, is Hunter X Hunter, which um, it's about a kid trying to he's, he joins this this this. Um, oh, I can just read it right from here. The Hunter Association is a non-government or organization. NGOs low-key control the world, which I'm sure most people know that this is my channel. And they're responsible for the testing and licensing of hunters, individuals who have proven themselves through rigorous exam to be elite members of humanity. The exam, like, tests their life, puts their life on the line. Like, not even Green Berets, in their, in their um, like, selection phase, They'll do crazy shit, but their, their life is never in danger. This this organization will you will have your life in danger during the during the test. It's like it's like what they used to do with in um with the tribes in like Sparta and shit, where they would they would uh when you were thirteen you go out in the woods and kill a wolf or something, like that's life and death. That's 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 more manly than what the Green Berets do or the Navy Seals do. Anyway, so th then they go to uh. When they pass the exam, they get rewarded a license, and it gives them permission to go to any uh, location in the world, meaning they can go to inside inside the Egyptian pyramids, meaning they can go inside, search whatever they want in the Smith Smithsonian, they can do whatever they want with um, any location on Earth except Antarctica. That's the one place that they, they don't have free reign on. And uh, they can go to, like, all the, all the temples, all the, all the crazy stuff that, like, explorers find or whatever. They're allowed to explore everything in it. 
they get they have they're all they're like the top sixty out of a hundred richest people in the world. Like getting a becoming a millionaire for them is like a rank H uh rank, which is like the last or second to last hardest rank of a mission. Of a hunt, I mean. Anyway, and I also think that this uh Hunter X Hunter explains the magic system of our world. It uh because after you pass the exam, they give you a there's a secret exam where they give you they teach you something called Nen, which I think is really Zen. And it, it's um like real Zen, not like the 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 hippie shit. Um where they can actually do crazy stuff and it's all based on like ever hear someone say uh it's a conditional response like uh i i i've been i've seen like hypnotists or like no touch martial artists and whatnot where they do something and it makes the person like fall to the ground without even touching them and i've talked i've, I've asked uh few martial artists that are that did it for did martial arts for years and were hypno hip hypno uh, licensed hypno uh, hypnotists and he's like he answered with uh that's a that's just a con- that's a conditional response and he said it like off-putting like ah it's just that's just conditional response i think people don't uh realize the key word in that condition condition can be set like you can set the condition if you were conscious of it, you can make, you can set your own conditions. And if you believe it enough that you, you could set conditions that if you meet them, it'll make, it'll, the other person's subconscious will automatically follow it without them knowing that the condition was set. That's all talked about in this map. And then it, it's like all about belief. Like, uh, James True talks about that a lot. I think he's, he's the closest to it. Um, all right, let me see if there's anything else from this I can say. Yeah, and this, this goes into, it talks about the, the, uh, contracts and conditions, which is what basically rules all of our court systems, contracts and conditions through the law of pirates. See, law of pirates. Okay. So those are the, those are the manga, the anime I'm going to talk about that I think the CIA have some way of like interacting with it because they're all. They all use English names, all the characters use English names, and they have such, like, uh, they reveal such truth to, about the world. That it's, it's really hidden in plain sight. And this, this whole organization is about being hidden in place, plain sight. This hunter organization or whatever. All right, so um, let's see. Get back to the One Piece map. All right. This Vibes of the Com- Cosmos guy talks about the moon, the moon map, right? And then he had that clock in Prague, which shows that it, it shows the sun rotating, the solar cycle going all the way around. So when it, the solar cycle is over here, about this much of the Earth is frozen. And these parts are really cold. Right? And if you look at the, this map, it has it's the one piece map. You got the four locations of getting in, four locations of getting in, a giant mountain in the middle called Reverse Mountain. The mountain here is uh, Rupus Negra. That's supposed to be at the, at the North Pole, I think. Yeah. And there's four entrances. And then we have the Calm Belt which is a place where ships can't travel. Ships, they get frozen in the water. They can't move in the water in this, lo- in this location. Okay, so what is the firmament? The firmament is a place where spaceships can't move. It's like, if you watch videos of rockets going into the air, like toy rockets, not toy, but like model rockets, they'll hit something and just get really slow. It won't explode. It just looks like it just hit like, water and it just goes really slow and it stops rotating and just, just kind of like drifts away and um so there's like a ice belt where it would be where it's hard for ships to move which is exactly what the calm belt is in one piece and then in between that 
is this area, this like new world area that it goes to. And this new world area is um, referred to as the dark continent in Hunter x Hunter. Hold up. Here's more maps like that. This is the map of Hunter x Hunter. It's just it's like a mirror map of ours. And the guy, the main the uh, author has said that Hunter x Hunter is a mirror to our world. He tried to make it a mirror to our world, and even the, the magic system in it that I just talked about. That he was asked in an old interview how he came up with it. And he said, "I just tried to make it as real as as real as human human as real as possible, or something like that." And the and the interviewer just kind of like laughs it off, but I don't think he was joking. And uh, yeah, let's go on. This is just some of the connections between this Hunter x Hunter and and uh, real world. Uh, the world trees. This uh, this one character talks about the world trees, and he's like, um, they climbed to the tallest tree in the world, and it's only like two hundred and something. I don't know, it's not that that big. And he's like, this isn't a this isn't a real one. This is just a sapling. The real world tree takes in magma and surpasses the atmosphere and, and becomes even bigger. It puts its roots in a mountain range. What does that look like? That looks like a freaking world tree. And then look at all these examples of world trees. This formula for solving how big this tree would be is like, um, take the diameter of the, where, of the base of where it's at and then multiply that by 20. This, this one, one of these is like, this is 50 kilometers here, the diameter of that. 50 times 20 is what? Uh, I don't know. I forget, I've done this before, I forget. Oh my God. Let's see. It's supposed to be a computer program, I can't even do fucking that. All right, uh, 1,000. Where was I? That's 1,000 kilometers into the sky. The firmament is at um, 100 kilometers, supposedly. So this would go through the freaking firmament into the atmosphere. And that's exactly what this freaking manga says, this anime. And look at all these examples of this. They're everywhere, all these world trees. Now, I was watching a recent video. Let me see if I can find it on my other screen, on my history. I think it was Jay, Jay Dreamers. I highly recommend his channel. He's got a lot of good stuff, but it might not have been. Hold up. Uh, where's that? Oh, it, it was actually the Lost Earth, Lost Century of Earth, volume 2.1. This guy. He talks about a lot of this stuff. But in this, in this volume, he goes into the Book of Enoch where they talk about the original version, the Lawrence version, I can't, I'm not, I'm not going to find it that easy, uh, talks about cutting down the trees, these giants that cut down the trees. And it was in the Book of Enoch, which, look at this. That's a, this, this shit's taken down by the chainsaw or like an axe. It wouldn't be that smooth if it just fell. If it fell, it would be, there'd be all these cracks and whatnot. That looks like it was li literally chopped down. Chopped down. Here's the formula. Ah, I forgot what it was. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the hell they were trying to say there. It's from a different... Yeah, let's play it. I took most of these pictures from this. He actually goes... Oh, here you go. Here's the ones that are cracked. What they look like. Tree. Tree. These ones are just pushed down by these giants. Tree. All right, so you get the giant thing. And Hunter x Hunter. Now I'll get back to the shape 
of the Earth and the solar cycles. All right, so you got the shape of the Earth. I don't think the Earth is flat. I think it looks like this, but it's concave, like a cell. Like, check this out. There we are. Yeah. This pattern has it looking like a cell, kind of. With kind of like how it's like uh, rotating up like that. Which I think is what it actually is. And this even goes into the constellations and whatnot. This guy has the accurate um, shape, I think. And he's really good at graphic animation. And he thinks he's the second coming of Jesus Christ. But I think he's a little confused by that, about that. But it's all right. I still think his theory is, is spot on, other than the size of it. He has it at our size. I think it's the size of the vibes of the Cosmos moon map. Like, imagine this as the size of... Uh, here, let's wait until he gets to a better part. And he explains every single part that the Flat Earth and... and uh, uh, Globe Earth dudes are always arguing about. Um, especially if you look at the people that actually saw it went to the top, to the firmament, like that, uh, the uh, guys who took the balloons up there, they all say something like, it was a flat disc with an upturned edge. Upturned. That's concave. That's what that means. And they, every one of them say that it was upturned edge or it went, looked like it curved up or something like that. And it's all because of the bending of light. And he, he says it's glass. And there's ice on the glass. And that's why the, the uh, sky is blue. But inside the, the glass, which would be the com belt in the One Piece model. All right, let's get to a good pic of it. Oh, here's how he... He says this diamond thing in there, which is like a... It's a structure. And this is how we would see it. The constellations. From Earth. He's really good at red graphical animation. This is how we would see it. So space is small. It's the center of Earth. Because Earth is a cell. So the, it would be like the nucleus of the cell. Right? Well, look at this cell. That's a freaking nucleus. That's space. And everything, we're all one fractal size being. So, and we have cells, we are cells, like, it all connects on, the, on a large scale and small scale. It's all cells. We're just cell, a, cell, a f cellular cosmogony. I think that's what uh, Cyrus Reed Teed says in his book. Um, the earth is concave with proof. I think that's what he called it. Cyrus Reed Teed. He had a his, he started a cult too. His name his cult was called uh, he was called Koresh, which the same name of the cult leader in the FBI that the FBI um, took out at Waco, which I found I find weird. There's probably some kind of connection going on there. Um, all right, so I'll continue with the shape. Let's get to a good picture of what he has right here. This is how he has it. There's two concentric globes. It goes in like that. Now, recently, I've been, I've been uh, well, a little, like, about a, a month ago, I read this book called The Shadow of, a, of the Torturer by Gene Wolfe, and it's a, it's a series, and it reminded me of all these different connections coming together. And um, where are we at here? It goes into The Book of the New Sun. It's a series. I'm on, like, I'm on the third book right now. Uh, and it, it goes into a solar cycle, The Book of the New Sun. And the whole, the main plot line is the book is about the Earth is dying, that's how it's presented, but really it's saying that the Earth, the Sun is not around as long. So look, if you look at this picture, all right, let's go to this one. Like the Earth is, the, imagine if the Earth cycle wasn't here. It was, right, let's zoom in. It wasn't here. It was like, and we lived here, right? We live on this island or whatever. Actually, South America is the one that's is the is the place that's used in the actual book, which would be here, I think. That's where vibes of the cosmos, that's it. And so imagine if the sun cycle, instead of being in this rotation here, it was over here. And only a little bit of the sun was hitting South America as it was over here. And it was slowly go going more and more. And it, they kept getting colder there. 
and colder. And the sun is slowly, they, they say the sun's dying, but really it's just rotating around this. And this is concave. It's inside the cell. Uh, all right, so then, where was I? Book of the New Sun. And it's about this, yeah, I'm not going to get into the plot. The plot is, uh, it's the world that is exactly like ours. Well, mainly I figured out, I found out that he named, he originally was going to call the series The Feast of St. Catherine. Okay, so you look at the Feast of St. Catherine. What does St. Catherine say? Also called the Feast of St. It's 25th of November. It has retained its probability throughout the century. Current martyrdom of Catherine of Alexandria. And did they remove what I saw? Oh, yeah, here. Like St. Martin's Day on the 11th of November, St. Catherine's Day also marks the arrival of winter. The arrival of winter. What would you call this? Where are we at? If the sun cycle was over here. The arrival of the true winter. The like 8,000 year winter ice age. Where everyone either moves under the ground or, or starts following, goes to new worlds as, the, as the, the sun rotates. And here is eight mysterious underground cities. That no one really knows why what they're for. Well, I'm sure some people do, but they're all massive, huge cities, and people live there. Probably during one of these ice ages that occur every around every eighteen thousand years. All right. So the book of the new sun. Later on, he goes into. I got a. I made a comment on on the website on Reddit about this. And someone mentioned that in his later books, he talks about, he, he cites this, this, uh, this book called Ham, or this essay called Hamlet's Mill. I never heard of this, and I've been le- looking at this stuff for a while. I'm surprised I never heard of it. But um, it goes into all the origins of human knowledge and its transmission through myth. So it collects all of our myths and makes a complete model of what the earth looks like. And it's exactly what I just said, exactly almost. I'm still looking into it, so I don't know for sure. But it, so far, it is almost identical to what I just said. It's all based on the constellation. It has, goes around twenty, about twenty-five thousand years. The constellation uh, shifts or does a complete rotation. Um, the constellation map, and each age is like twenty-one, uh, twenty-one thousand five hundred, twenty-one hundred fifty. Years, um, the uh, what was the other one? No, I don't. I didn't see anything about it being the cell yet, but I think I'm gonna find that because I'm still reading it. I just found out about this literally last night. This Hamlet's Mill. Oh, uh, where I didn't pull up the PDF actually, but yeah, I'm still like only only in the, in the first chapter of it. But from the wiki of it. It seems like uh, uh, it, this theory is, is pretty much spot on for what the shape of the Earth is and how our entire his, how our, our, our how our entire history repeats, like and is always slightly different. Um, we construct a myth of a heavenly mill which rotates around the celestial pole and grinds out the world's salt and soil, and is associated with the maelstrom. Uh, let's see. Where did I see something? Yeah, of course, all the critics say it's oh, no, not not serious scholarly work. Uh, the insistence between yeah, they're all idiots. This guy was a genius. Whoever this 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 uh, MIT guy is. Um, where's his name? This dude. Genius. He figured all this out. And. Uh, so I still got to read this, but so far it's, it's um, pretty close to what my, my theory is, which is it's like this, like the moon map. The moon is flat, I think, according to like Crook Crook Triple, and it's a hologram, X-ray hologram, I think. Doesn't really matter what it exactly is, but I don't think it's a rock. You can't land on it. Um, but the earth is actually concave, but it looks like... This on the on the concave cell, like this. Uh, where's he at? This crazy dude. 
uh, looks like this, like we're on the inside membrane of the cell. The inside is space, just like a human cell. And uh, yeah, that's where I'm at now. Uh, I think that's everything. And uh, yeah, I think the CIA has been putting this through, the, using Japan to put this into human consciousness for years and to get, to get the minds of, of kids to actually like, un un like subconsciously learn real information, not the crap they teach in school. So the CIA is kind of the good guys in some way. Central intelligence doesn't just, like, if they were really, if you think about it, if they were really um, worked for America, wouldn't they call themselves, like, the American Intelligence Agency or the United States Intelligence Agency? No, they just go Central Intelligence Agency. Intelli Central Intelligence Agency. Who's the Central Intelligence? The universe. The, uh... That's why I think the finders, I'll go into another one of my articles about the finders. The, I'll go, I think that's why I think the finder, the leader of the finders, Marion Petty, this guy, uh, where's he at? The game caller. Yeah, I go into how everyone says the finders is about pedophilia. I, I think it has nothing to do with that, and that's a cover. For some reason, I, it could be various things uh but mary and petty you should do make people play this these consciousness expansion games and where they would, they would do something like this okay i'm going to call a game for each of you to go on a trip pick whatever place you want stay gone for at least a month get out of dc pick some spot where you're on your own one day on on day one imagine you're one year old on day two two years old and so forth until you get up to the age you are now at the end of the time, have a celebration and come back and make some money while you're gone. Bring back the surplus. Put some pressure on yourself. It's tough, it's tough being a little kid in a world that's designed for big people. Just walk around and think like a little person. Get rid of those notions you got from believing other people and stick to what you've learned on your own. Everybody got that? That would expand your consciousness like massively back in the day. Um, this guy's background is ridiculous. He was... Uh, Let's see. He was, according to this Game Caller book by Toby Terrell, he was the military driver. Marion Petty was the military driver for all famous World War II generals and a few presidents, including Patton, MacArthur, Marshall, Eisenhower, FDR, while they were in D.C. He was the guy driving around. He knew all their wives on first name basis. He knew all their strategy, like he knew a bunch of strategy that they were doing on, he, he, he would say, like, every single one of these dudes, these generals, were all controlled by their wives. Their wives could get them to do anything. And he was, like, <laughs> on a first-name basis with all the wives. He, uh, he would start his day, days with, like, just walking around the D.C. until the universe told him what to do. Like, just, like, going with the flow until the flow, like, caught up with him, and then he knew exactly what to do. He used to, this guy used to buy 600-acre plots of land with, like, a mansion on it, and then right after he, the, the sale, he would go to Chile or Argentina. Just completely random, totally unpredictable movements. And he would get, he, at some point, he had, um, he would get orphans. This is why I think they associated, one of the reasons why they associated with, uh, them being pedophiles is they would get orphans and they would train the orphans how to actually think not what to think how to think like some some of these the one thing that it said in that book i'm trying to find it in the article it said uh hmm uh, damn i can't find it where is it yeah here Finder, yeah, the, if these orphans weren't found, they'd be dead or in a real pedophile ring. The finders taught them how to think. Modern education education does not. Modern education teaches what to think. A child that understands how to think can master almost anything extremely quickly. The finders were training consciousness expansion. They were using TRS-80 computers like cell phones for secret communication before the word cell phone even existed. They were doing this in vans and shit with kids doing operating this. 
This is how advanced they were. And this, this is like in the 70s or the 60s. They were using cell phones. These people were masters at understanding how things work. They understood perfectly how to take over whole cities and towns in a matter of months. They owned almost one half of every strategic building and area on the entire east coast of the United States. That is something that the FBI would definitely be interested in. Not pedophiles. They don't give a shit about pedoph pedophiles. They never give a shit about pedophiles. They love pedophiles. They're so easy to control. Just look in the, uh, who actually ran the Epstein Island. It was, uh, it was Robert Mueller. FBI head. They don't give a shit about pedophiles. They do give a shit about people that can take over whole countries in like months. And that's what the finders were. Because the finders were, I think they were the real, they're the real CIA. Everything about Langley and the CIA documents on the website, I think is a deception. They're a deception agency. Why would you trust anything they ever did? Everything that, that they put out is most likely fake. Why would they ever tell the truth? They're a deception agency. Um, anyway, that's the finders. And I think this Marion Petty guy was like, he's like, I think he was like a, a Jesus like his, he was connected to the creator. Like this guy was good. He wasn't. He wasn't evil. He was connected to the creator, like Jesus. Instead, of, but instead of being a carpenter and a uh, preacher or whatever, he was. He, he was a. Uh, he had mastered in military strategy, poker, and martial arts. And uh, yeah, this guy's. This guy was nuts. Anyway. Where is it going with this? Uh, yeah. He was the real progenitor of the Central Intelligence Agency. So this, this group that are way ahead everyone, they were using cell phones in the 1960s with computers that they had kids programming on, uh, were the reason why they went to Japan to push human consciousness. They knew that the Japan, no one would suspect anything coming from the CIA if it went through Japan first. And they were right. Because it, the, the Japanese, the, all the English speaking, English, English uh, <clears throat> named Japanese anime have so many hidden truths in them. It's like ridiculous. And I've already shared that with the Law, Merge, law of Pirates, One Piece, East Blue, Calm Belt is the firm, it could be the firmament where um, actually the Lord, Lord, the uh, Stephen Christ dude, he talks about a, um, a space shuttle engineer sent him info on like a secure channel or something that the reason why they buy this, that, that big black, tef, the, the big black uh, Teflon on the front of the space shuttle is because they have to go in to this, to this comm belt at an angle and it, it rips off like most of the, the entire, um, like armor of the space shuttle as they're going through it because it, like it stops them, so it's like a com belt you can't move. They have to put so much armor on, or they can't, or they, or the space shuttle will stop inside the inside the uh, the com belt. I don't know. That's everything I got, I guess. Huh. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>